And it was Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And I hesitated to put this um, video up. Only reason I'm putting it up is because enough of you have contacted me in the last few weeks asking my opinion um, in terms of dentistry. I'm not talking about personal values or anything like that. I'm talking about dentistry. How will this affect you being a dentist? And remember, my channel is towards general and pediatric dentists, mostly in North America. So if you're from another country, you might be interested in this election. I don't know who's not interested in this election. This is gonna be probably the most pivotal election of my lifetime, at least my lifetime so far. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, how is this gonna change your practice of dentistry? How is this gonna change your practice? How is this gonna change everything that goes on with you depending on what type of practice you have so let's kind of talk about that um like i said i'm gonna try to stay away from my own personal opinions although i think a lot of you will kind of pick up where i stand um just from how i say things and i'm trying to be as independent as possible in terms of my comments and i fully expect i'm gonna get a lot of hate and a lot of people blow up my <laughs> I'm fully prepared for what the what's gonna happen, the blowback from me posting this, and I don't really care, to be honest. You remember, people my age don't care. Say whatever you want, don't care. So um, this is just based on the facts and the facts that are posted and the facts that are out there. Um, first of all, here's what I know. Um, I'm originally from the Oakland area. My family is all attorneys. The attorneys know this candidate very well. They've worked with her in the courtroom. They've worked with her as a prosecutor. They know her, they know her, they know her, and they know all about her. So everything you're hearing, as I emphasize the word all, is true. They know about Willie, they know about that. This has been a joke in our house for, I've known about this for decades. I mean, I don't know, decades, plural, but a pretty darn long time. So all the rumors you hear, they ain't rumors, okay? Personally telling you, from the horse's mouth, from people who have been in the rooms when this stuff went down, okay? True, 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 true. So if you wanna talk about values, okay. Second of all, I'm gonna say straight out there, it infuriates me that some women are still using that to get ahead and being like that to get ahead. Because yeah, sure, I had opportunities in residency, I had opportunities in dental school where if I had been an anti-Me Too person, I would have been way more ahead than where I am now. There were a lot of shady stuff that went on in universities and in the workplace where if I had accepted things that I could have accepted, which I never did, you know, forget this Me Too movement, like you're playing the other field. You get what I'm talking about. I would have many more opportunities than I do now and I chose not to because I have values. So I do not, you can't have it both ways, okay? So that's all I'm gonna say. Anti-feminist, okay, next. Sorry, I just put it out there. And this is from personal experience and personal, I'd say firsthand knowledge, not from me, but secondhand knowledge from direct family members and friends. Okay, that being aside, okay, you gotta see the positions of where with these, what these two candidates put out there. And of course they're not really talking about dentistry, but they're putting some stuff in terms of healthcare and business and taxes and things like that. It really depends on what your practice is like. Is it an independent practice? Do you work for a DSO? What is your clientele like, right? Um, how is your clientele gonna be affected by inflation that will inevitably go up? Um, and inflation that will probably go down. Um, taxes that will go up for upper middle class and businesses. Sorry, taxes that will go up for upper middle class and businesses. Taxes that will go down for lower income. How will your clientele be affected because if your clientele has less income less expendable income will your clientele be buying the same procedures that they're buying now now again i said this is all from first-hand information so i'm this is my first-hand information back in the mid early 2000s after i had gotten out of residency started working i, I had my hands in many different honey pots i was at multiple different practices some were dso practices some were in lower income some were in urban some were in rural some were in very high affluent areas so when the market really crashed after obama's election in 2008 um, whether that was directly or indirectly related or only due to the housing crisis who knows whatever market crashed big time okay um, people had a, a lot of people were losing their jobs. A lot of people were losing their benefits. People had almost no expendable income. Doesn't matter what level of income you were, whether you're high, you were low, people didn't have money. People struggled. 
I can tell you how it affected me in my various demographics because I had them all, okay? And none were good. That's much, that much I can tell you. So uh, initially those who still had their insurance benefits would still get treatment for their kids, at least in terms of ortho. That didn't stop. Kids still got treatment when it was needed. No one ever skimped on their kids. However, they did shop around. And higher income offices, the more affluent offices, people who would normally pay no problem moved to you know, more managed care or more chain places. And they definitely saw a lot more value. Like I saw people who were high income coming into places they would have never come before, you know, just whatever's cheaper, quicker, you know, things like that. So that's something to keep in mind. I think the more bougie places, if this one takes office is gonna, who y'all gonna hit, take a hit. Y'all gonna take a hit because corporate tax is gonna go up. Um, you know, uh, all taxes are gonna go up and it's gonna take a while before the capital gains taxes and everything hits. It's not happening day one, but when the first round of taxes expires at the end of 2025 is when they're gonna let it expire. It's when your office is gonna take a hit. And even if you work for a managed care DSO, this is what started to happen. Again, we're now we're talking 2010, 2011 for me. This is a couple years after Obama took office. The, initially it was fine because I actually got out of the more affluent places because I had so much work in the more middle places, in the rural, in the urban. I had lots of DSO work. But then the DSOs started, and they even told me, they started getting hit with higher taxes and higher overhead from whatever, a trickle-down effect, okay? And they, even though I was the highest producing doctor with the highest reviews and everything like that, I mean, I would have never thought I would have been edged out they had to lower their overhead so they had to take new grads they would do what they could to squeeze you out and to get you to quit if you were higher paid because it was hard for them to renegotiate your contract even if you were paid so they'd move me from per diem to production they thought that would that would squish me out and i even heard them say that oh if we move her to production she, she'll she'll leave nope <laughs> i still did really really well uh, oh shoot now we got to find a way so they'll try to limit my chairs they'll play games they'll do what they got to do to try to get they don't care about the quality they care about what their overhead is hey, they're a business they got to run a business i get it okay i don't take it personally anymore now that i do run my own business but at the time i took it really personally because i did great work and i did great value and great volume and i was quite offended that i was being squeezed out so but that's kind of got me to do what i'm doing now right it helped me reconsider everything so just keep that in mind i don't think anyone's safe with this candidate um it's going to be also you have to keep in mind that this candidate hasn't really posted what do you call it her stand on issues her stand is a her true values is nothing that's being posted and they can put whatever they want on their website but they're going to do what they're going to do later so um all it is is a copy and paste over the current administration, which really hasn't done anything anyways. So just because they're posting they're going to do something doesn't mean that's what's really going to happen. They're, they're not held to that in any ways. Hmm. It's just a copy and paste. Um, this candidate, you kind of know what you're going to expect as much as you might not like it or you might not like the values. Basically, what you had up until COVID from 2017, 2018, 2019 is what it's going to be, which was actually a very robust economy. Yes, it's not going to be great if you deal with um, import export from other countries because of the tariffs. No, it's not going to be great. If you, I don't know what's going to happen if you're using Inge or Aligner. What's going to happen? Are you going to be paying tariffs on that? And, and what constitutes, what constitutes, um, what gets a tariff? What if something is made in one country and then distributed in another country like that hasn't been set yet because a lot of you are using brands and products that maybe you're getting from one country and then it's exported here you know you don't know if you're gonna have tariffs so you got to really look at where you're getting your products from how you know what what country's hands are touching it because it might affect your overall overhead if this candidate takes in i don't know right also going back to this candidate if okay we know that there is going to be universal health care. That is going to be the goal, okay? Whether she says it's not, it is. It has been her goal. Look at all her interviews from 2019. That is the goal. Look at what Bernie Sanders says. That is the goal. How is universal health care? I mean, you can look at the health care in Canada and the UK. Some of you like it. Some of you don't. Is it good for a dentistry? I don't know. 
Um, you can't do things in a timely manner. You have to get approval for everything. There's wait lists for everything. I don't think it's going to be great for a lot of dentistry. If dentistry, is dentistry part of universal healthcare? We don't know. They didn't say yet. We're not sure. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a difficult thing. We're not sure how that's going to affect our take home. How is that going to affect insurance reimbursements? We do not know. I don't think there's going to be much effect with this candidate. You also have to take, and going back to what, what worked for me in 2009, 2010, 2011, I think I told you elective procedures, cosmetic procedures, those took a massive hit, not only for me, but also for cosmetic dentists out there. Um, unless they went to really, really cheap places. So if you're doing a lot of all in fours, you're doing a lot of cosmetic work, you're doing a lot of adult ortho, yeah, that's gonna take a hit with this candidate because people are not gonna have the money to spend on that. Um, and I doubt that university healthcare is gonna cover stuff for adults, especially cosmetic or elective. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep that in mind. Now, what always worked was kids' procedures. No one ever skimps on their kids they will spend the money if they need to and the co-pays to get what their kids need, especially if it has to do with airways, shapes of their face, their jaw growth, things like that. So I think this is an excellent time between now and November 5th to learn as much as you can about phase one, interceptive, airway, um, you know, teen treatment. I mean, the people will always get ortho for their teens. There's lots of teens and kids out there that need it. And there's not enough places for them to go that do good work. Um, so this is a great time for the next two months to, to level up, to get educated and to do what you need to do to get prepared for what could be an incredible market crash come November. Um, and if you look at where the market was after various elections, there's actually a lot of data out there. Um, big crashes after Obama was elected. Also, some, some crashes after George W. Bush was elected. I mean, there were some other ones. It's uh, anytime there's uncertainty or stress, the economy and the market is going to crash. If people don't have expendable income because their money is tied up in assets, they're not going to have money to do big procedures. And I think a lot of dental offices, either way, are going to feel the sting come the end of the year. Um, there's also a lot of people who are hoarding their money right now. I mean, I know this from firsthand experience and there's enough doctors that are contacting me saying, why can I not sell any of these ortho cases? People are waiting, people are waiting. Yeah, they're waiting till after November 5th. So now is the time for you to get leveled up. You can still do as many consults as you want. Get those consults going. Use your iTero, get them treatment plan, get them ready because I can tell you come November 6th, depending on the outcome, you can contact all those doctors and doctors, all those patients, and you can probably start a lot of cases. A lot of times patients do need to use their FSA towards the end of the year, and you can hit get a lot of starts done towards the end of the year. So it's a great time to do that. So that's pretty much my position. Again, I didn't make that as, <laughs> I tried to be as independent as I could, but you can see my position on this. Um, and obviously, just to say another thing, again, I'm not 20, I'm not 30. So I grew up in the very anti-socialist, anti-communist age where we had drills, you know, in grade school where we would, communists are coming, we gotta jump under the chair and protect ourselves from missiles, you know? Um, just like we had earthquake drills, we had communist drills. Um, this happened, you know, up until the 70s, um, 50s, 60s, 70s, it was normal. And we, I'm not gonna say we were not brainwashed, but we, Socialism, communism, was the risks was explained to us and why that was bad and that wasn't part of our liberty and our values in the United States. Um, I might be the last generation of Americans who feel so strongly about my freedom and my liberties. Um, and I do not want my grandkids to grow up in a society that doesn't have it. Um, so I do take what's going on very personally. Um, and I'm not at all comfortable with the true leadership that might be coming in, only because I know the truth of what the values behind it. Um, and I know what direction they're gonna go. And um, I feel a lot more comfortable with keep, keeping things status quo, the way that things they are. But you know, maybe we're old school, I don't know, but old school is what founded this country and what gives us our freedoms and what keeps us as the number one nation. And I don't know if we're still the number one economy, but things are gonna change drastically if we head this direction. So just be prepared. Um, I don't know if I would even want my kids to be doctors if things head in this direction. I think that they're better off just having a useful major, um, you know, saving as much money as possible, and not investing a half million, eight hundred thousand into their into their education, especially if payments, you know, and reimbursements are going to drop significantly. So just keep that in mind. All right. Best of luck today at the uh, 
debates.